So now let's talk about sharing and collaboration. Um, again, if you want to unlock value to ArcGIS, we need to share the capabilities and share our work with others. Um, and we want to help people collaborate. Everybody in your organization is looking for new ways to collaborate uh, and make their life easier. So uh, in order to do this, because we're going to have people collaborating and doing different things, we need to know who they are and what access they have to everything. So we need to have a single destination where we can manage our content, manage the identities and the roles of everybody that's logged into the system and what they're doing so we make sure the right people have access to the right data and the right apps. Um, then we can share and collaborate with some apps. We'll pair some apps together for that. And then we're going to show a new tool for ArcGIS Pro that allows you to uh, deploy apps in an automated fashion. You can get a lot more apps done more quickly, easily, and with less risk. Okay, so first we'll talk about your ArcGIS destination. Again, if you're going to set up sharing collaboration and leverage the platform for uh, multiple people in your organization to, to use it, you've got to set up roles and identities and groups and uh, assign them access to certain apps and data as well. And we do that through an ArcGIS destination, a single destination that they can go to and log in and find all this information. So Harry's going to show us a little bit about these destinations. Yes, Harry. yes I will. So while I'm using ArcGIS over the years, I, I found that there's three main components to the idea of sharing and collaboration. Uh, there's identity, a person. There is a group, and a group controls content and people. And the third one is, is content itself. So I've already logged into my organization. This is the one that we're using for the seminar here. And you can see that by my picture and my name in the upper right-hand corner. So one of the first tips I, I really want to stress is that you really need a picture and a bio. And here's the reason why. As more and more people begin to use your data sets that you've published, they want to know if it's an authoritative data set and who is the author. And by having a picture and a bio, it really does add good credibility to your data set. And it's more likely to be used than if you didn't have one because you just don't know who's making it. So that's my first tip. Whenever you're using uh, your identity, make sure you have a picture and, and, and a bio. Now, remember, the other component to sharing and collaboration is this idea of groups. That's how we can control people and content. So here you can see that I'm a member of four groups. Some of them I own, some of them I don't. There's this one group called Field Operations. When I click on that, you'll see that there's 17 members that are part of this group. Now, the way we've set this group up is that only the 17 members can see the content inside of here. Uh, some groups can be public, some can be private. There's all these configuration settings that you can use. But it's through a group that you control people and you control the content. So one of the pieces of content in here is this um, one called Hydrant Priority Inspections. So let's just take a quick look at what this map is. So this map was created by one of my coworkers, and it's a fire hydrant analysis. And this is where um, Adam was mentioning that circle. There's the planning phase of field work. What my coworker did was put 300 foot buffers around every fire hydrant and found fire hydrants that were not overlapping another fire hydrant. So what that means is a uh, fire truck's hose is 300 feet long. So if they plug into this uh, fire hose, right, or this hydrant right here, they can never reach another fire hydrant. So these are a uh, top priority to be inspected to make sure they have the correct flow rate. Because if one of these hydrants do not have the correct flow rate and a fire department plugs into them, then uh, the areas around the, um, the um, white area here that doesn't have the buffer could be at, at risk of not being able to put out fires. So once he did this analysis in ArcGIS Pro, he shared it to the rest of us. We could stop here. But instead, we're going to create an application to share this with the needed personnel. So under the share dialog, we'll go ahead and create a web app. Now, instead of using one of our configurable apps, I want to use Web App Builder. So Web App Builder has been out for a little while, and it is an extremely powerful app that allows you to do some great um, configuration on the look and the feel and even widgets. All right, so here is Web App Builder. The first thing you're presented with is how do you want to theme this map? So you can see we have the geocoder in the upper left-hand corner with buttons uh, below it. Um, I could change the theme to put the everything down at the bottom. It is a very intuitive uh, user interface that's here. So I'll just choose the billboard theme. And then the next section is widgets. So the widgets are basically the buttons that you're going to be putting onto your web application. So here's the forward and back extent button. By just clicking the little eyeball, I'm turning it on in my app. It appeared right here. 
Let me do that again. I'll just turn it off. That's how easy it is to put buttons inside or widgets inside of your, your app. Now, one of the ones I really want to talk about, and I'll go ahead and just show you, because we have over 35 of them that we've already created from adding data to doing analysis, looking at attribute tables. But there's this one right here that is extremely important. And this is the one I would like you to write down. It's called geoprocessing. So how many of you have created a task service inside of your organization? Uh, anybody? Anybody? Either geocoding service or running some GP models. Okay. So here's how you can plug in your custom task services into a web app. It's just right through here. So that task service has a URL. It has a REST endpoint. So you can copy and paste it in here. And what that allows you to do is to have your own geoprocessing models be ran on the data inside of this map. And that's extremely powerful for you to be able to do a lot of configuration of this particular app. Now, the last point I want to I want to uh, show you is this preview button, especially when you're dealing with field crew. If you know they're using a tablet, then you can select a tablet. But let's say they have the iPhone 7 Plus or iPhone 7 6. By choosing the different um, views of the phones, you'll be able to see exactly what your field crew will be able to see. And this is great when you're beginning to set up your map and your extent and your symbology and so forth. So I just wanted to quickly talk about some tips for sharing and collaboration, because we've said it a bunch of times today. But it's about identity, groups, and then content. You combine those three together. You can control at a fine grain the content in an organization. And then, of course, apps is how you access it. So instead of sharing a raw web map, let's just put it around, uh, wrap a web app around it like this. Great. Thanks, Harry. All right, so some key takeaways. If we're going to share and collaborate, we have to know who's who and who's what and which have access to what kind of data and groups. So we need to set up our ArcGIS destination, and that's our content management system. Uh, it's a central location where people explore what uh, apps and data and groups are available to them. And you can create configurable web apps right from within uh, the, that destination, whether they be some of the templates or you can go into Web App Builder to create your own.